Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in this world. God bless you. Let's read Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 12. Or actually, let's start at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. What does Jesus always say? Your faith has made you whole. If you had the faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you could say to a mountain, move over and be thumped in the sea, and it would go. That's the power of faith. Here it's telling us, above all, taking the shield of faith. It's powerful. The shield of faith is powerful. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching whereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Watching out for one another. You got my back. I got your back. We're supposed to be for edification. Uplifting one another. Encouraging each other. This division don't be part of that. That's part of Satan. Verse 19. For, and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, that he was crucified, dead, buried, the third day he rose from the dead, ascended into the heaven and sits at the right hand of god the father almighty then come to judge the quick and the dead and for which i am an ambassador in bonds that therein i may speak boldly as i ought to speak but that ye also may know my affairs and how i do brothers and sisters Write this on your heart. Keep it always in front of you. And put your armor on every day. Sleep in it. Polish it. Yeah, here in verse 17 it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. What is that? Go to John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. John the Baptist, who went before Jesus to make straight the way that he would go. Baptizing with water. Read 
Remember I told you in the last video about the great battle between Satan and his angels and Michael and his angels? Well, now we're going to read Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Those are the twelve children of Israel, the twelve tribes. And she being with child travailed in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great wet red dragon, this is Satan, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to, vow, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. He drew a third of the angels that I was telling you in this last video. He drew a third of the angels away from God. That's how sneaky and deceptive he is. That he would draw holy angels away from God. Who? Without Jesus and Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, we don't stand a chance. Verse 5 was a unfulfilled prophecy. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Who is that child? Jesus Christ himself. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Remember? He ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and he comes to judge the quick and the dead. So, skip verse, verse 6, and then verse 7, and there was a war in heaven. Here's the war. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. They didn't win. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. They were cast out. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. This is coming to pass. This the book of Revelation is revealing the things that are coming. They're coming. These things are coming. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent caused the devil and Satan. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. How did we overcome this devil and his angels? And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. He's coming. He's coming. He's going to be thrown down into this earth. And he's going to come as a man. Because he has the ability to transform himself. How about when Jesus said, you have entertained angels unaware? Well, then they must not have looked like angels because angels are big and angels have wings and angels are mighty and powerful. But you would un entertain them unaware? Well, if they look like that, how could you be unaware? No, because they came looking like men. 
And that's what Satan's going to do. He's going to come imitating Jesus. He's going to come as a man. In Revelation, hold on. Let's read Revelation 13. This is talking about when the beast, the Satan, the Antichrist are coming on this earth. Listen. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, up out of the sea, having, listen, seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon the heads the names of blasphemy. What did it just say in chapter 12? Scroll back or get your book out and look it up. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, which is a political system. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. What do bear's claws do? Rip and tear. What do lion's teeth do? Rip and tear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon, which is Satan, gave him his power and his seat. Well, his throne and great authority. Well, why would he do that? Oh, because he's like John the Baptist. He's preparing the way for Satan. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war against him? Well, just want you to know that the beast is the new world order, the leopard, the political system, which is going to include education, finances, military, and religion. All that is, all the world armies come together. Who can make war against him? Who can make war against the beast? All the world's armies are together. What country could take that on? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue for forty and two months. That's three and a half years or 1,260 days. That's 42 months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. What did that say? Power was given unto him? Who has the ability to give that power? God. Who is on the throne? God. Who is in control? God. Don't fear. Don't let this shake you. Don't let it shake you. God is never going to give you more than you can handle. He's never going to tempt you with more than than then you're able. And he's always going to give you a way out. He's going to open a window or a door. In a, a way for you to get out. Do you trust him with your life? Because if you don't, you're going to get a problem. You're going to get a problem and you're going to realize at a point in time, I can't, I can't handle this. I can't do this alone. And that's when you're going to realize and you're going to say, I need God. I need Jesus. I need the Holy Spirit. Will you get them or will it be too late? And it was given him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. Is your name in that book? 
Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? That's the only way you're going to be saved. Otherwise, you're going to fall down before Satan. As it says, And all that will dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. You're going to fall down and worship the new world order, the beast, the leader of the new world order, the whole educational system, the financial system, the military system, the educational system. They've been behind our back for about 30 years now, teaching our children, indoctrinating them. We see it now, but we didn't see it then. That's how sneaky he is. Continuing, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. He's imitating the lamb. He's imitating the Christ. He's imitating Jesus Christ. He's imitating him. Horns like a lamb, the lamb of God. Get it? But he speaks as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. All the new world order power. And causeth the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed, except those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's a very important verse. Verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Who Remember? God gave him power. He gave him power to do these things. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword, an image of the new world order, and did live was almost destroyed by sword, which is war, but it didn't die. It was he, its wound was healed and it did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Fall in line, worship the, the beast, worship the new world order, or be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, no one's exempt, to receive the mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Listen carefully. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. It is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. Satan is coming as a man. He's going to look like any other guy. He's not coming with a big red suit and big black horns. No. He's going to come in peace like Jesus did. He's imitating Jesus. 
He's going to do that in the beginning. But there's going to be so much chaos and craziness going on when he comes that people are going to be like, oh, thank goodness, somebody who can bring peace on this earth. Because he's causing all this distension. He's causing all the chaos. He can call a stop to it. And people are going to fall down and say, Oh, thank you. Oh, praise your name. Oh, heavenly. Oh, oh, oh. He's going to deceive millions of people. When they take that mark, there is no gate into heaven. If you take that mark, you will not be in heaven. You can't take that mark. Remember when Jesus said, he who saves his life will lose it. He who loses his life will save it. He who saves his mortal life will lose his eternal life. He who loses his, he who saves his mortal life loses his eternal life. You can't have it both ways. You, you want to preserve your spirit. The flesh is going to die anyway. You're never going to live forever in this flesh suit. It's not going to happen. It's impossible. Don't trade your eternity in for a loaf of bread or a sip of water or medical care. Don't do it. That's his deception. Remember the drugs the addiction. He knows exactly what to say to you to draw you in. He's been at this for thousands of years. How much experience do you have? Well, I don't know. I'm a, uh, I'm a 69 year old woman now. Hmm. How long have I been following Christ? Uh, 20, 30 years. Um, man. And he still got on me tonight. He got on me. He was against me. I could feel him making me irritable. Don't go to sleep for a minute. Stay alert and on aware at all times. When you lay down at night, tell Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to sleep now. Please watch over me as I sleep. I trust you to watch over me while I sleep, Lord. I tell him, Jesus, I'm going to sleep now. You know, I'm trusting you to watch over me. He wants to watch over you. He really wants to. He died to do that. Don't you understand how much he loves you? Haven't you got that through your head yet? How precious you are to him. How each and every one of us is so precious to him. He doesn't want to see any of us be lost. It's his desire that none be lost. But there will be those that will be lost. They will fall down and worship the false beast. They will... save their flesh and lose their soul. People are going to do it. But the children of God, those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, God will give us the strength to get through it. Trust him. Lean into him. Hold on to him. Call out to him with everything you're worth. Be unashamed. Don't be ashamed. Be unashamed. Be like the blind man that said, Oh, son of David, have mercy on me. And they're like, Shh, hush up. Tell him to be quiet. And he just yelled even louder. What happened? Jesus came and gave him his sight. Don't stop yelling for Jesus. Call out to him at all times. Anytime you're in any kind of trouble, call him. He will hear you. He will answer you. Listen, he may not preserve your life in this world. He may not heal your sickness in this world. 
but he has promised that the next you're going to be right as rain. There will be no pain, no death, no sorrow. He will dry our tears. And we're going to live with him forever. Forever. You know, I, I, I watch these near-death experiences where people talk about when they see Jesus, when Jesus comes to them. And he looks at them. And they just are so enamored. And they can't take their eyes off of his eyes because there's just this love that people are like, no, I don't want to go back. No, I don't want to go back. And he tells them, no, it's not your time. You have to go back. But his eyes are so full of so much love that the people just can't take their eyes off of him. They say they look at him, and then his eyes, all of a sudden, they, 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 they like become so loving, so intense with love, they just can't take their eyes off of him. It's going to be like that, I tell you, the light in heaven. I've seen it. It's so beautiful. It's like if air were little particles that you could see, little particles of light, but every little particle of light is love. And it just wraps around you and just envelops you. And it's just so indescribable. It's so, God, it's so wonderful. I can hardly wait. All the things in this world that I've been through, all the trouble that I've had, all the things I've endured, all the times that he stood by me, saved me, pulled me up out of the mess that I was in, protected me and kept me out of trouble. Oh, my Lord God, he is so good. I can hardly wait to see him. To fall down at his feet and thank him for all that he has done for me. Oh, man. He loves us so much. If you can't, Phantom, please read. When he was sacrificed, when they took him and arrested him, how they beat him and they scourged him, now they... They put a blindfold on him and hit him and said, Who hit you? He was beaten so badly that he was hard to recognize that he was even a man. Oh. They nailed him to a cross <laughs> through nails like railroad spikes through his hands and his feet. I don't know if you understand what he went through. For you and me, he was crushed. The Father crushed him with our sin. All the sin that we've created or ever would create, all of humanity from the beginning of time to the end, all of that sin, he was crushed for it so that we could have forgiveness, so we could have eternal life. Who would be so foolish to throw that away and not accept him as Lord and Savior? There will be those that will save their mortal flesh but only for a time, but only for a time. They're not going to live here on this earth forever. Our Lord is coming back. And, uh, he's coming to get us at the seventh trump. I really believe he's coming at the seventh trump to get us. Because we're not appointed to the wrath of God. The seventh trump ends the trumpets. It ends the seals and the trumpets. Then begins the wrath of God. The bowls. The vials. 
of the wrath of God that will be poured out on humanity that is left behind. We will be in the millennium with Jesus, the thousand year reign of Jesus, and he will teach us things we never knew. Can you imagine, you know, if you think about the people that sat on the hillsides that he fed with the fishes and the, and the loaves, all those people there for three days, you know, listening to him teaching. <laughs> A thousand years of listening to him teaching us, pouring his love out on us. Don't miss it. Please don't miss it. And bring as many as you can with you. Because those that are lost are lost forever. And as always, I love you so very much.